You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is um, Mudashi Ushitu. On this day's program, we'll be looking at um, sport development um, in Nigeria. We all know that um, sport is a unifying factor um, for our nation, Nigeria, and it is one of um, the sporting giant in Africa. Talking to us on this particular topic, sport development in Nigeria, is um, Professor Sadiq um, Abdullahi, who is based in um, Florida. Um, Professor Sadiq Abdullahi he seems like a very perfect person to talk about this topic, having been in all sector of um, sport development um, in Nigeria since um, the sport minister in Danusa to also the present um, sport uh, minister chief um, Sunday Dari. With so many journals as regards to sport development in the world and in Africa. So, um, you're welcome to the program, Professor Sadiq Abdullahi. Thanks for having me again. Sport development, I've read some of your journals and um, we've seen that um, you're doing so much to unify us through sport development. And um, for Nigeria, despite the massive um, talent in the country and the love of sport, um, it's quite unfortunate, if I may use that word, that the industry is still much under development. Uh, underdeveloped, there is no um, a metric progression from um, the age group to the professional level and also um, the amateur. It seems everything is disjointed from every sector. Now tell us how we can do well in sport term development in Nigeria. Uh, absolutely. We can do well in sports development in Nigeria. It appears as if uh, things are disjointed. If you go back to the history, if you go back to the 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, up to the present time, you can see there's a disconnect between um, uh, uh, the, the actors and then the programs that will uh, yield sports development as we know it around the world. Uh, and there are several factors for that, which I will go into later. Uh, but again, it's a unifier. We've never taken advantage of that concept. We talked about it. The political process right now is not addressing it uh, one way or the other. Uh, the policy that we, I was part of uh, the drafting of the na national sports industry policy uh, is, is, is underway. Um, you know, so there are so many opportunities that we need to, uh, uh, you know, we need to capitalize on in order for us to unify uh, Nigeria. But, but despite this, there's still one worrisome aspect about um, the lack of non sport development is not showing, it's not reflecting in international competitions. Because we didn't develop, we, 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 it doesn't reflect. I mean, that's, maybe that's the reason why um, there's been so much um, negligence of um, sport development. How is that able to, to take place where there's no sport development, but when it comes to international competition, we do well? Explain <laughs> to Nigerians. Well, 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 there are two factors. There's, uh, there's the internal factor responsible for the... Um, <clears throat> for the international competition. And there's external factors. And, and we've had this debate over and over. I remember the conversation I had with uh, one of the ministers, uh, Bolaji, former minister Bolaji Abdullahi, uh, during the 2012 Olympics, London Olympics. And uh, they were concerned about Nigerians um, uh, competing for other countries, right? You know, why do they develop uh, our athletes go out to get uh, to get developed and represent the country. Why can't they come back? Now we're having a, a different kind of conversation after the 20, what, 2020 uh, Olympics, uh, Tokyo Olympics. You know, so to come back to the internal factor, right, all of the mechanisms within the nation must be in place for us to develop, right? There are two areas. There's a, there's, um, a public uh interest of, of focus uh or contribution and there's a private right so when you bring both public and private there then you have a development right so when you talk about disjointed uh, approach then that's what you're referring there's no synergy between uh, the efforts coming from uh, the public which is the government and then uh, 
and then the private sector. The private sector are doing very well. And I mentioned last week, you know, that uh, basketball is doing very well. Football is doing very well, right? And other sports, uh, track and field is doing very well. These are less cost, less uh, uh, effective. They're not, they're not too expensive for some of these sports, you know, to attract the youth, right? Other sports, golf, tennis, right? Uh, 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 a little more complex, you know, so development in these other sports uh, become problematic as opposed to the other sports that are not uh, cost uh, intensive. Okay, thank you very much. We all know across the globe that sport development is based on a number of factors, that sport management, sport administration, um, facility and equipment, sports personnel, funding and sponsorship, institutional sport development, sport competition and festival. Um, what area do you think is really holding us back in growing, in developing um, sports? Very clearly, it is the leadership that we've had over the years. And, uh, and now I'm going to say it, that all the ministers from Sunny in Danusa to Sunday Dari now have made uh, a concerted effort you know, to address the problem of sports leadership within the national sports federations, right? The problem in the National Sports Federation is there's a disconnect between uh, the executive, the leadership, the president and the vice president, and then the board. That problem has not been uh, addressed. My, uh, Minister uh, what? Solomon Dallon tried to address that. But again, it started it, but it did not go through. Uh, other other problem uh, started. Uh, the current minister, whom I've uh, you know I've uh, given my services to, right, is uh, trying to again, but he didn't go the route of what uh, Solomon Dalon did. Instead, he has uh, one of his uh, pillar is. Uh, uh, well, grassroots sports development, right? So, so the, the leadership of of um, of uh, federations are not really, you know, in a, a top priority in how he wants to address it. Uh, you know, so that is his strategy. But again, that is number one. Okay, and um, also we before um, I ask you more question, I want to say that we've been talking about sport policies, and we also know Sunday Diary also um, talked about sport policies, and um, other past ministers talk about pulse policy, but it seems we have um, not that um, will for implementation. And some said that there's no clearly spelled out um, blueprint or long-term development whatsoever to develop sport on all levels in the country. Why, why, why don't we have that uh, blueprint that will affect every sporting um, um, uh, um, um, situation, every sporting um, development in the country? We don't have well spot um, spelled out blueprint, no facilities and all that. Is that the reasons, or is it just the leadership that are not doing what they need to do? Well, it's a combination of all of the things you just mentioned. Right? It's not that easy. Okay, as you and I know, um, it, it's, comp it's very difficult to implement a lot of stuff uh, in, in Nigeria, right? Because of the obvious reasons of, uh, you know, a lot of interest groups conflicting, uh, uh, competing, you know, for very little resources that comes out, uh, you know, uh, of events, uh, particularly sports. Right, you know, so, but to be very fair to them, I've read all the documents since in Danusa in 2008, uh, 2009. I've read all the documents up to this point, you know, so I know the effort has been put. And then there are a lot of co uh, committees that have written uh, a lot of reports, right? If you look at all of the reports, they, there's consistency, you know, the substance of the report doesn't change. Right, it is, it is. It is the same. The language changes. How how people present it changes. Right, in order for them, you know, to have control over whatever resources comes with it. So that's number one. Number two, when you talk about we haven't we have a national sports policy. We've always had it, right? Uh, but but we've been having problem 
implementing them. It's difficult to implement a, uh, a, a national sports development policy, right, that, again, did not go through the states, uh, states' involvement uh, 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 or contribution from the local government to the, um, to the state government and then to the federal government. There's a disconnect, like you said. There's this the disjointedness that you mentioned earlier. Is it is because of that? It doesn't stay. Uh, we don't follow through, so that everybody uh, is accountable for their part, right? You know. So the effort is always coming from the federal government, and then and then the definition the federal government has on sports development. Again, and I've said it before, we need to have a rethink. On what the definition on is the, the national the 2008 national sport policy has been revised to include the 2000 and uh, what 20 uh, 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 sports industry where people call it sports uh, commercialization and all of that so because this is one of what one of the pillars of the current minister uh, It has uh, grassroots development. It has uh, uh, athletes as uh, welfare, athletes of welfare. And then the last part of uh, 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 current minister's Sunday diary is sports as a business. You know, so we have we have it. So the, 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 the what I'm calling for is that now let's shift all of this into action, right, as we go into the general uh, presidential election coming up so that we take ourselves seriously and it's a win-win for everybody involved it's a win-win so we should not you know nobody should monopolize sports development in nigeria nobody should no group no individual no minister comes in and 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 and, and think that yes they they have the magic uh, solution no it has to continue sports development is a process that involves everybody it has to be inclusive and you know and then uh, diversify you mentioned all the aspects you know so we can't we don't have time to go into all of the aspects but i hope that in the future all of the categories that you mentioned are related to sports development administration finance the politics right uh funding uh you know so many things but again let me underscore this that all of the ministers that I've worked with directly or indirectly have attempted to, to address the problem. The, 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 the problem. the bigger problem is that our willingness to understand each of our roles and play it well so that you can hold me accountable for the part, right? In theory, we have system theory, right? That one aspect of that system, if it's affected, is going to affect the everything and finally right in the outside world in industrialized world in a free market world right uh in a middle a country where you have a, a solid middle class uh -huh. sports development is a private uh, uh entity yes well said um uh, professor we'll go on this quick break when we come back there's two more major important questions we need to ask you before we round up to today's program don't go away it's still 360 sports Yeah, welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are talking about um, sport development in Nigeria. And uh, speaking to us um, from Florida is a sport um, social science researcher, Professor Abdullahi, um, Sadiq Abdullahi, who is based in Florida and a lecturer in Florida. Two questions before we round up today's program. And um, my first question, a lot of people say government, um, sport cannot develop under um, government, that there should be a change of and do you think this will work for Nigeria or Nigeria can still be developed, spot in Nigeria can still develop under the government or there should be a transfer of power from government to private sectors when it comes to spot development? No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's, it's both. Uh, the government has a role to play. The private sector has a role to play. But the, the role of the government in Nigeria, in Africa, uh, uh, has to be clearly defined. 
right? If it is clearly defined, a lot of people are saying that, look, their role is to provide enabling environment for us to, to, to function. That is the primary function. Don't get into all of this uh, other stuff, uh, uh, administration of the sport. Don't, don't get into, uh, for, provide the funding, you know, for it consistently. In the future, when we go into the specific problem facing all of this force, you're going to see where some of these problems are emanating from. It has to do with money, okay? The business of sports, right? The politics of sports now is undermining, okay, the development of sport. And let me add, and I'm going to repeat this over and over again, you know, there's, there seems to be a conspiracy in Nigeria, in Africa, to undermine, okay, sports development. And in the process, the youth is the one that suffers. And we can see that. I give you, I can give you so many examples. I am a product of a, a, uh, a private sector. Uh, I, I started playing tennis at the Lagos uh, Lawn Tennis Club. I was a ball boy there. Then I went to Kaduna Club and I continue, right? And then the schools now pick up uh, 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 that aspect. Government was not involved. Government did uh, did what it has to do: provide the facilities, provide enabling society uh, uh, environment, right? And then uh, anchor in those days, anchor sports in schools, right? To continue the process because at the secondary school level, that is where students uh, are really getting ready to go to the next level. So when you talk about this jointed approach in the beginning, that's what I meant by that. That if you look at it, A, B, C, right? We we'll go from A and then we we'll jump to D, and then uh, what happens to C, and then and then uh, and and then B and then C. So those are the things going forward that I'm I'm excited about your program and other programs, you know, that are now beginning to actually look at the problem without castigating, without criticizing, uh, you know, uh, looking for, uh, you know, uh, fights, uh, you know, with those people who are running the sports. No, they are doing the best that they could. But science of sports development today has changed. The way we approach it has changed. And that's what my research has, uh, has provided. And I'm excited, you know, and that uh, we're having this, uh, this conversation. Yet, um, also interestingly, is this some um, some sport federations in the country seems to glamour for autonomy. Nigerian football federation, Nigerian athletic federation, Nigerian basketball federation, and one or two others. Um, don't you think it's high time the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport to grant those big giants of sport federation autonomy based on what they have done so far? <laughs> well, you know, interference and autonomy, right? Okay, so let's be very let's be very clear. You cannot, in our setting in Africa and in Nigeria in particular, you cannot have complete autonomy of the sports, right? I mean, what does autonomy mean, right? You know, freedom. You want freedom to do whatever you want. Okay, then we're going to go back to this to the national sports uh, industry policy that is being uh, about to be proposed soon, right? You know, what is in that policy? What does the policy state regarding your question? So when we go back there, then we can now begin to hold people accountable. We all have agree, what is autonomy? What, what does it constitute? Right? And then again, we go back to the role of the government. But to answer your question clearly, you know, you cannot have complete autonomy, right? Because government has an interest, a, a what? A proprietary interest in a safeguarding uh, some of the aspects of sports but when you're talking about development right and i've said it before you talked about devolution of uh, what authority and all of that stuff. development is all development is local right so it has to come back to the local again we're not talking about the big national issues because of uh, talking about devolution in nigeria restructuring in nigeria and all that they do have effect on this aspect, the sports sector, until we understand it, until we have a group of new thinkers come in and have this kind of conversation, then we can begin to address them one step at uh, one uh, step at a time. But but again, you cannot separate government from uh, sports and sports development in Nigeria and in Africa. Yes, what well said, and uh, with your vast experience um, as a researcher. 
um, to, a, to a lecturer, to a tennis player, to a basketball stakeholder, to many journals on sport development. Your top five recommendations as we close today's program, what's your recommendations, which obviously the whole of the world is definitely going to hear. Your recommendations to the growth of sport development in the country as we round up today's program. I think the first recommendation um, I'm going to give, I've been giving this all, you know, is to bring us together again uh, uh, to, to have this honest conversation um, uh, uh, about, uh, you know, where we are, where we want to go. We've had a lot of conferences, right? And we have a lot of people have written a lot. I've written a lot about it. Uh, a lot of my friends in the media, I don't call, call their name, there are too many of them. Um, uh, I've recommended that, you know, that look, yes, number one, bring bring us back together now it could it could be a small uh, you know uh, group and then let's look at it and then from there okay um to look at the what has been done right the the, the sports policy is coming up the new uh, that is proposing uh, a new national sports commission that one is coming up right so there's a lot of stuff that are coming up that uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel we just have to be very focused. Key, finally, okay, recommendation, okay, is the funding of sports for international competition. That's part of the problem we're having with the with the basketball, the Tigers and the Tigers and, and, and those people that are going to represent us in Nigeria. If we do not resolve that problem, we're going to have that problem tomorrow and forever. So let me end with that you know, to lead up to future converse conversation as it relates to uh, what our objective is. Thank you very much, um, Professor Sadiq um, um, Abdullahi, for being part of the today's program. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Thank you for inviting me. That's all we could take on today's program. And if you want to be part of the conversation or you want to know what today's topic is all about, sport development in Nigeria, you can check on all our social media and do as we give you the best in sport analysis, in sport uh, development, and everything that has to do with sport in Nigeria. Bye for now.